Square the belt using the center line method and mark a perpendicular line across the belt. Lay the splice face up on the belt to visualize the bias. To create the bias cut lines, measure off one end of the squared line, a distance equal to one twelfth of the belt width. Ensure the orientation of the line is correct for the orientation of the splice. Draw the bias line. When the belt is cut, determine the distance to skive on each belt end. Note that the measurement will be different on each belt end for Super Screw Original. It does not matter whether the short side skive distance is on the leading or trailing belt end. Locate the spacer, which will be your measuring point for the short side skive distance on the first belt end. Determine the shorter skive distance needed on the first belt end. Measure from the spacer to the edge of the splice. Using multiple points, create a line that represents the short side skive distance on one end of the belt. To determine the longer skive distance needed on the second belt end, measure from the far side of the spacer to the other edge of the splice. Using multiple points, create a line that represents the long side skive distance on the other end of the belt. Skive off as much top cover rubber as possible without cutting into the plies of the belt. It is recommended to skive the bottom cover if it is greater than one eighth of an inch. Once the skiving is complete, chamfer the top cover on the trailing side of the belt. Then chamfer or bevel the top and bottom edges of both ends of the belt. Centering the splice on the belt, slide the strip onto the end of the belt with the shorter skive reach back. Check both ends of the splice to ensure there is an even amount of belt on each side before moving forward. Ensure the belt is firm against all of the pre-inserted spacers. Using a heavy-duty drill and the PZ bit provided, install one screw in the fastener strip second from the belt edge in the row closest to the center stripe. Ensure the belt is still butted firmly against all of the spacers. Then install a screw on the opposite side of the belt second from the belt edge in the row closest to the center stripe. Install a screw in the center of the splice closest to the stripe. Install 10 to 20 screws alternating from side to side and row to row. Avoid installing the screws one after another along a single row as this may cause the top and bottom of the splice to misalign. Remove all spacers from the splice and discard. Center and insert the opposite belt end with the longer skive reach back into the splice so the two ends of the belt are in firm contact with each other. Make sure not to leave a gap between the belt ends. Install one screw in the fastener strip second from the belt edge in the row closest to the center stripe. Ensure the belt ends are still in firm contact with each other. 
Install a screw on the opposite side of the belt, second from the belt edge in the row closest to the center stripe. Install 10 to 20 screws on this side of the splice using the same alternating screw pattern from the previous side. Sometimes it may be necessary to angle the drill slightly toward the center stripe to drive the screw into the insert in the bottom of the splice. Alternate from side to side, row to row, installing all remaining screws in both sides of the splice, leaving the screws in the center stripe for last. Finish by installing the screws in the center stripe using an alternating pattern. The belt ends should still be in contact with each other. Examine all screws to ensure they are all properly seated in the splice. Any screws that are not recessed fully will need to be tightened further. Look for the splice to show signs of slight pucker around each screw before moving on to the next section. When complete, check the bottom of the super screw splice to ensure the screws have fully engaged the nuts. The screw tips on the bottom will have a recessed ring around them in the rubber when the nuts are properly engaged. 